a new Rode NT1 mic, a new studio camera 6K Pro, a new Atem TV Studio HD8, and we have a mic converter to go with that too. It's a little bit of a Blackmagic design takeover. <laughs> Hey, and welcome to DigiPro News, a topical podcast that looks to bring you the latest and greatest news from the digital video creation world as such. So that could be anything from hardware, software, new technology that's come into the field that is gonna help you out as video production professionals, creators, and it means you don't have to go searching for it. I'm bringing it to you for free. In this episode, it's a little bit of a black magic design takeover, but we're gonna start off with a new Rode NT1 mic Yes, a fifth generation NT1. And then we're gonna hop straight into the Blackmagic news because we've got a new studio camera, 6K Pro, which I actually have a video on up there when it was released. And then we have a new Atem TV Studio HD8, and we have a mic converter to go with that too. So let's delve straight in and let's look at this new NT1 from Rode. All right, so we're back with yet another Rode release something of a habit it seems in this podcast but here we are they've done it again they've released another product and you know i've got to tell you about it this feels like kind of a big one although i do say that every time it seems but they have revamped the iconic nt1 for a fifth generation version and it's got some pretty game-changing features now i'm sure you all know how iconic the nt1 is from rode it's what started the company it's been around four decades and it's now in its fifth version, which means they probably have no plans of dropping it anytime soon. Why would they? It's one of their best sellers. This new fifth generation model is special for a few reasons. The first of which is that although they've kept the XLR on the bottom of the mic, which is a connection that we have known and trusted for nearly 60 years now, they've, managed, they've kept that. But in the same housing, they've actually managed to get a USB-C port in there too. That means you can now connect it directly to a computer through the USB-C connection and start recording straight away. Or, you know, if it's the trusted way of going, you can always use the XLR and go through a DAC to the computer as you've done for many, many times. But you have the option now. They're also saying that it's got a revolutionary preamp in the fifth generation NT1 that comes from the Rodecaster Pro, actually, it was introduced in that, that allows you to record at exceptionally low noise levels, though this is only over USB-C, um, but it allows you to record at what they say, the world, the best in the world, they claim, at 4 dBA. So you get the full output of the mic. The mic is ultra high resolution, up to 192 kilohertz, but the thing about this mic, and this is if you're recording over USB-C again, is that it has 32-bit float recording. Now that's 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 the game changing bit here. They've actually done a separate video just on this. 32 bit digital output capability, float digital output capability allows you to basically, it gives you the freedom to forget to set your gain controls because in post you can adjust it so that you never miss any of your audio. So if you were clipping, if you were missing you know, data in the lower levels, doesn't matter, you just move the noise floor and it's back again. That's that's astounding. Now, obviously that's not best practice. You should always, always be setting your game correctly and testing before you even hit the record button. But there is flexibility there now. For mishaps, this is fantastic. The NT1 fifth generation comes as all of the others have done in the past with a shock mount, with the XLR, with the USB-C cable um, and a pop filter, all for $249. Well, it's on pre-order for $249. It's not actually released as of yet, as of this recording. I can't wait to see what the reviews are like of this mic. And of course, as and when I see them and I've got a full picture, I'll let you know. All right, on to Blackmagic, which is gonna take over the rest of the show. So. I'm hoping you're a Blackmagic fan. Blackmagic have released a suite of products, first of which is the Blackmagic Studio Camera 6K Pro. I've done a flash release on like my first thoughts on seeing the video that they released with it up there. And I'm gonna go into just a little bit of deeper content on this, but I'll kind of reiterate what I said. It's a very interesting product to, for them to have released and 
it goes a step above the 4K Plus and the 4K Pro that they had. These are the those were the Gen 2 of the studio camera. I started with the Gen 1 uh, way back when they released that. Now we're up to the 6K Pro, and it does have some intriguing features. Okay, so probably the first thing to note, um, and it's it's not this isn't what takes it a, a notch above, but you know just so that people know what this camera is capable of. It is a high resolution camera with a 6K sensor and has up to 13 stops of dynamic range, which for a studio camera and a prosumer level studio camera is quite incredible, really. The 13 stops of dynamic range on a super 35 millimeter sensor, yes, it has a bigger sensor than the 4K ones do, um, allows you to maximize your lens choice. I'll get onto the lenses in a second because this, this is another feature on lenses. But with the 4K versions, and the Micro Four Thirds mount, you really had to be selective because it had a smaller sensor and it had that mount type. So the lenses, you know, they generally aren't as wide. You have to be really selective with the lenses that you choose for those cameras to get the most, the, the best quality out of it that you can. With the 6K Pro and its 6K sensor and a super 35 millimeter sensor, your lens choices are the more open, they're wider because you don't have to go down to f2.8 to get a really nicely lit image out of a 4K anymore. You can go at f4 and get a beautifully shot image out of the 6K Pro. It means you can choose really lower level lenses and still get the same quality. I mean lower level in terms of uh, aperture, not in terms of the quality of the lens. I mean in terms of how fast it is. You don't need to spend the big bucks on the lenses to get the same quality anymore because you spent the big bucks on the camera. That's effectively what's happening. But most of you will already have the lenses that you would want to use with this camera. Add into that raw recording via Braw, Blackmagic Raw, um, you have, and the, the dynamic range that you have with those 13 stops, in post you have so much flexibility to manipulate that image if you didn't get it right on set. There is a whole host of things that you can do now especially in Resolve with Braw, that to bring that back to how you wanted it. And 13 stops of dynamic range and Braw recording is just marriage made in heaven, really, isn't it? Okay, so lenses, as I just mentioned, this is the first Blackmagic Studio camera to feature an EF mount, a Canon EF mount. Now, that's important because, as I mentioned, it allows you to have a much wider choice of lenses to go with this camera. And it's it's not the first kind of like studio camera as such that they have that has an EF mount because Ursa Mini Pros can be used with a studio um, prompter on the top, uh, with a studio monitor on the top, and they have SDI out connections. You can use those as studio cameras. That's one of the things they're used for, and they have EF mounts. But the actual proper studio cameras that they make didn't have EF mounts up until this point. Now, the EF mount is only for the 6K Pro. It's not on the 4K Plus or the 4K Pro. They are still MFT mounts. But for those that wanted studio cameras that weren't using PL broadcast mounts and didn't want to have to go down the MFT route, this is now a fantastic option because I'm sure you have EF mount lenses that you would want to use with these cameras. I'm sure you have lenses from all sorts of different brands, you know, Sony, Sigma, Samyang, Nikon, Panasonic, Olympus, whatever it might be that you can have a Metabones or a Photodeox or whatever it is adapter to go to EF. I mean, obviously you could do that with MFT, but now you have the super super 35 millimeter uh, sensor. You can use any of those lenses with this and get a you're getting more image out of the camera for your money because it's a bigger sensor and you've got a wider selection of lenses that you can adapt to use with it. The next feature is something that I think is, in my opinion, a win for this camera is that it has built in ND filters. Yes, they are built in to this camera only on the 6K Pro, but they are built in and they're variable. So. That means that you can use this camera in a much wider variety of settings. Harsh sports like sunlight beaming down, doesn't matter, you've got built-in NDs and you can switch them up to make sure that you've got what you're focusing on on court lit beautifully and the background's not blown out either. You're in a gig, it's ultra low light, but the stage lights are massively bright, doesn't matter, you've got NDs. You are 
doing talk shows and the lighting's all over the place. Heaven might even got lighting. You've got a window looking out onto a city or a landscape or whatever it might be. Doesn't matter, you've got NDs. It just allows the flexibility for this camera to be used in so many new scenarios. And I think that's great. Another feature is that it has up to two USB-C ports on it, which you can connect SD drives to and record raw straight to disk. Yeah, you can record 6K, and I need to check that actually, but you can record 6K raw to your SSD disks and just unhook those and get editing in Resolve straight away from the camera. Oh, and it's time coded as well. So all of your cameras, if they're going into an Atom, you might probably might wanna record into the Atom, but if you wanna get the 6K recording out of the cameras so that you can upscale the 1080p recording from the Atom, in Resolve, you can absolutely do that. And it's all time coded, so you don't have any issues with sync. Oh, amazing. Now they do also state that they've got built-in 3D LUT processor with advanced color control features that support Resolve color correction in post, which is great. Um, if you have a specific look that you want for your image and you want to be able to see that in the monitor of the camera, you can now do that. But one of my favorite features that often gets overlooked is the fact that these cameras have a 10 gigabit ethernet port on them. Why is that important? Well, because if you're a fan of DigiPro Tips, and I'm hoping you are by now, you'll know that 10 gigabit is something that I'm a fan of. It allows flexibility. It allows us as modern day video professionals to work at higher capabilities. This is a point in case. That one port allows you to have video, so program in, program out, audio, that's audio recording, talk back, and tally and power, all of those things through one cable. You just connect one ethernet cable from your camera to your Atom or your switch because the Atom will find them all on the switch. And that's it. You've got it, you've got it. The Atom will, will record everything, hook your SSDs up, record 6K, and you've got everything else done through that one cable. Amazing, absolutely amazing. So that's the Blackmagic Studio Camera 6K Pro, and that is coming in at a price of $2,495. Say it's available now and it's in stock, which also means though, the 4K Plus and the 4K Pro, which are still very good cameras, and if you have a MFT lenses, or you don't want to spring for the price of the 6K Pro, then they are now at lower prices as well. So get yourself a great camera, you know, for a lower price. Win-win. Oh, and if you're, you're wondering what the best lenses are for the 4K Plus and the 4K Pro, well then I have a video on that very same thing up there. So go check that out because as I said, you do need to be very careful with the lenses you choose for those cameras to get the best image quality. Okay, so staying with Blackmagic, it, it's basically the Blackmagic design show this week, isn't it? They have a new Atom switcher. It's the Atom TV Studio HD 8. There's probably not enough time for me to go through all of the different features that this has because it does have a lot, but the thing to know about it is that it's made, it's basically a beefed up mini extreme ISO, at a mini extreme ISO, but it does look and do things at a higher level. This is like, I'd say this is like a junior TV switching console. I've got articles on my website about different sorts of TV Switches, um, I've used TriCasters in the past, a whole host of different types of TriCasters and I love them, but Atoms have swept into the market at that prosumer level. And this is the closest I've seen to a TriCaster. It's, it's pretty great. So let's get into some of the key features here. Um, so it has eight 3G SDI inputs and outputs on the back of it, which means you, yes, you are capped to HD on this. Um, but as I mentioned, if you're using the 6K Pro cameras, or actually even if you're using the 4K ones and you, you record to USB-C through those ports, it doesn't matter because you have those higher resolution recordings that you can basically swap in. The Atom is almost just recording proxies for you, which is an amazing workflow. It has four upstream keys, um, select bus for the four keys and a DVE, T-bar, which is very TV-like, and a program preview for professional level control, record direct to disc via USB-C. So yeah, 
basically record from the Atom to USB-C. That records your timeline that it has a resolve like timeline on it. Open it up in resolve. You've got all of your live switching cuts on a timeline in resolve that you can then have your cameras brought in with exactly the same time code on them because it time codes it and you can swap out the footage. It's so, so it's such a good workflow for multicam um, editing. It really is. Oh, and if you choose the ISO version of this, because there's two, if you choose the ISO version, just like the other atoms, the ISO allows you to record each input individually. So if you don't want to record internally into the camera, but you want the option in post to swap out cameras, you made the wrong cut or something, you can do that with the ISO version because it's recorded each camera input separately. And they're all perfectly in time because it time codes it as well. Now there is a bit of confusion here into what else is extra you know, above the Mini Extreme ISO, because as, as I mentioned, it does seem like a bit of a beefed up one. But let me just go into some of the more specifics of this product, because it's under the hood things, and it's it's things on the back that you won't necessarily first think are important, but they are, and do put it above one of the Minis, the Atem Minis. So let's just dive into that a little bit. So one of the nicer things about this Atom TV Studio 8 is that it has its own kind of like audio desk built into it. Before on the Atom Minis, you had an audio mixer in the interface, uh, the digital interface, kind of when you hook a, a, a monitor up to it. But on the TV Studio HD 8, it's built into the console. So you now have uh, knobs and dials and controls for your audio inputs actually physically there. You don't need to have to use a mouse and a monitor to change all of that. It's it's there. You can do it physically, which is a nice thing to, to have, really. Especially if you're not using it in con, uh, conjunction with like a Rodecaster Pro from Blackmagic or any other audio desk for that matter. There's AC and DC power supplies for redundant um, battery backup, basically. If things were to go bad, you can still power your Atom via a, another power source, which is nice to have. One of the other things um, that was noted that I found um, via a different review is the fact that although you've got the two XLR inputs to the Atem, so if you are using a, another desk um, like a Rodecaster Pro and you have all those channels and you want to just route that one mix into the Atem, that's fine. But if you want to have all of your mics, say you're doing a, a big uh, conference or a talk show or something and you want to have way more channels than that, then they now have up to 64 channels of MADI digital audio, although only 50 of them are active, they say. But that's that's a lot of channels. Um, we'll get onto how you can do that um, with another product from them in, in a minute. But yeah, basically digital audio routed to the Atom and you have control over all of those audio inputs through this new Studio HD8, which is pretty big actually. For the first time, the Atom switcher actually has an Ethernet switch inside of it, which has four ports on it, um, which is intriguing um, and important for the things that it is doing with those ports. There's two audio outs, a control out and a studio out so that you can route different things to those outs and be able to have your program record one out and what you listen to in your control room, a different out which is good for many different scenarios and you don't want to be routing the wrong signal to both the control room and your program out. So yeah, good to have. An interesting feature that I would love to see reviewed when people get their hands on this is that you can have, uh, when you when you purchase it, you, there's an option now for internal storage and it's I think it's two terabytes um, of M2 NVMe SSD storage. I think that's what they're going with in this for internal recording. Why is that? interesting well the internal recording isn't really interesting the fact that you can then access that recording via those ethernet ports because it's got its own switch in it you can access that on your local network to start editing with straight away you can even they claim you can even be editing whilst it's still recording because of this feature that's really really cool but then also the potential for it to be a black magic cloud store as well so it can be sending it up to cloud storage or one of a different cloud storage provider because it's hosted on the Atom itself means that anybody in your team anywhere around the world 
can start accessing your recording as soon as it's uploaded. So it's like it, it's uploading as you're recording and people anywhere else in the world can start downloading and editing that whilst you're still recording. That's pretty huge. And talking about remote, let's just, let's have a little word about this because on the 6K Pro, I forgot to mention this, they have the Studio Camera 6K Pro, they have the ability to remote stream back to Atom switches now. Um, the HD8 being point in case, it has, the HD8 now has streaming bridges inside of it. You don't have to have those physical um, little devices that Blackmagic made to be able to receive like an encoder, decoder. Um, they have them inside. It actually has eight of them. So you can take eight feeds from remote cameras into your Atoms um, just via an internet connection. As long as your cameras are capable of it and the 6K Pro is, then you can take a feed from anywhere in the world. All you need to do is take an XML file out of the Atem HD8, send it to your cam op who loads it into the camera, connect an internet connection to the camera. You can even do it from a mobile hotspot is what they're claiming. And that will start streaming in H.264 stream back to the Atem switcher from anywhere in the world and it will show up as one of your inputs. That's pretty cool. But actually, sorry, the thing I should say about this is we don't know how it time codes those camera inputs because obviously there's gonna be a lag because it's going over the internet. So how it works with time code, I don't know. Whether it just time codes it, how it sees it as an input or whether it sends it back to the camera because it is there is there it's a two way sync that it's got going on because you can actually have tally and I think program out on the camera. So it sends a feed back to the camera remotely, wherever it is. Be interested to know how the time code functionality works on that for editing and post. Anyone test it, let me know. So yeah, basically, um, Atom TV Studio HD 8, there's two versions, one with ISO recording, one without, and also the option for additional internal storage. I'm gonna be super excited to see how this changes the game for smaller scale productions. Um, and you know, what use cases this is gonna have, especially with those kind of remote features as well. Um, yeah, I'll keep you updated on things that I see about this because it, it, that in combination with the 6K Pro are, are pretty game changing in this world. All right, and onto the final piece of Blackmagic news. And this is the Blackmagic Atem mic converter, which they announced with everything else uh, in that update. What is this device all about? Well, as I mentioned with the Atom TV Studio HD8, God, such a mouthful. It allows you to have MADI digital audio inputs. How do we get that? Well, there are a number of ways, and if you use MADI, you probably already know how to do that. But if you don't, this little device, the Atom Mic Converter, is one way to do this. So as you can see from it, it has four XLR analog inputs on one side and MADI digital audio output on the other. That means that you can connect more than two XLR inputs into this converter and it will convert it into digital audio for you to then connect to your switcher and have many more channels than just the two that on the back of the Atom allows you to. But that's not all actually with this device. It actually allows you to have more than four channels because I hear a lot of you in your head saying, what if I need more than four channels? I've got a whole suite of people that are talking in my production and I need more than four channels. Well, don't worry. You can daisy chain these converters together using the MADI ins and outs on the other side so that, and every converter will go into the next one, add those channels onto it, and then that one last converter with the MADI out into the switcher combines all of those inputs into just one cable. Each of those analog inputs on the side has eight ADCs in each one. That's an analog to digital converter, by the way. And that has a dynamic range of 131 dBA for each input. It says there's precise audio matching between inputs and the ridiculously low noise floor level of minus 129 dBV. Another interesting feature uh, on the other side, on the output side, is that it has a HDMI port. Why on earth would we need a HDMI port on a converter? Well, it's, it's to allow you to see your audio input levels and waveforms on a monitor. 
So if you're a soundie and you want to be able to monitor your levels visually using one of these, there's not, you know, it doesn't have any kind of input monitors like a, a field uh, device would. You can connect a monitor and you can see it there. And every, if you daisy chain, like I mentioned, each input gets added to the monitor. You don't need to have separate monitors on each converter to view all of those inputs. It will just add all of the channels that have an input into the one monitor, which is also pretty cool. So yeah, for more audio inputs, MADI digital audio inputs into your Atom TV Studio HD8, this is one way to do that. And these things cost $395 each. All right, that is the Blackmagic Design product show. No, I'm joking. That is the end of my roundup though for this week on the DigiPro News podcast. As usual, if you found a piece of news, uh, a piece of tech, something that would help us out as digital video creators, professionals, production artists, whatever you wanna call us, then let us know in the comments on YouTube, in a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, wherever you're listening or watching this, then you know let us know because it helps everybody out and we want to work smarter, not harder. That's what DigiPro Tips is all about. And this is definitely what this podcast is all about. So I'll catch you in the next one. And remember, work smarter, not harder. It gives you more time to be creative.